Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Cambridge, Massachusetts. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of the 18th annual CDO IQ event. It used to be an MIT event, now it's on its own. This is theCUBE's eighth year covering this event. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Sanjeev Mohan. Majik Spakowski is here. He's the co-founder of Prophecy. Good to see you, thanks for coming on. Yeah, absolutely, great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you bet, so co-founder, why'd you start the company? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, uh, there's a the long story and the short story. I'll try to combine both <laughs> okay, of them together. Good, good. Give us the little bit, really. <laughs> the middle version. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think actually my previous company, uh, we were working a lot on uh, data, a, a lot on AI, hmm. building very specific models for pharmaceutical uh, space. So very vertical specific. And what we would keep we kept seeing all the time is that even though you're trying to build a lot of fancy models, usually the b bottleneck under the hood is the data. Right, and everyone keeps talking about it for the last 20, 50, 100, however many years. Yeah. <laughs> data is the problem, that there is a lot of problems with data quality. Yeah. Very often it comes down to the actual way you're ingesting that data and the data pipelines, the concept of essentially ETL, right? So in that company we saw it firsthand, a lot of enterprises just struggle with mm -hmm. their data. Um, I think Raj Baines, who's our CEO, was one of the CUBE interviews as well. I've met him through a uh, Berkeley Skydeck accelerator mm. for startups. We got to vibe a lot around, hey, how's Spark difficult to use for other people? It sucks in a lot of places. How data is just bad. Uh, he was working at the time on a little bit more AI-facing company. We were like, hey, AI is great. If everyone is struggling with data, let's first solve the data problem. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's where we decided to join up the forces and work on the data space and data, data transformation. Well, data is painful, uh, it really is. It's yeah. Managing data, working with data, getting data quality is very, very hard to do, so I love the mission. Mm -hmm. But w how do you do it in a way that's, that's different and unique? What's your secret sauce? Is it math? What else is involved? Yeah, absolutely. So we look at it as a combination of three different things. Right, so first of all, Prophecy is a data transformation copilot. Right, um, there used to be a lot of ETL, a lot of low-code tools uh, in the last 20, 30 years. That's great. They've been working for on-prem, they've been working on legacy systems. Most of the engineers hate them. They want to code up everything by themselves, but the business can't code. Yeah. That's the usual story, right? They, and there's a struggle. There's this conflict of, you know, IT is building one thing in code, and then the business is trying to do another thing, maybe visually through Altrex, Informatica, and all of those legacy tools. Um, so the way we approach it is that our solution merges both of those worlds. And that's through our visual uh, connected with the compiler interface. So whatever you do on the visual canvas when you're building your data pipelines, they turn into high quality code on the other side. Engineers love that. Engineers can modify that code and that then becomes again a visual uh, pipeline on the other side for the users. Recently, over the last year, we also added generative AI capabilities into the product. So that actually a lot of the pipelines, around 50% of the pipeline can be built uh, just by the AI automatically mm -hmm. for you to gain a, a lot of extra uh, productivity. So AI, Gen AI is bringing that, what? The natural language capability? Uh, yeah. An orchestration? So what's an example of a pipeline that you can build conversationally? Sure, sure. So, so yeah, so there's two aspects to it, right? One is the conversational aspect yeah. to it. One is what we call promptless. Actually, promptless is what is really interesting for our customers. Promptless? Our, promptless, I yes. See. Is what's really interesting to our customers, right? Because with conversational interfaces, hmm. you're changing your mindset. Hmm. You might be writing the requirements in English, but engineers, analysts are not really used to it, right? They're, they live in the world of SQL and Python. So you're asking them to do something new hmm. yet again, right? With data, with promptless interfaces, actually the tool just predicts the next step for you, right? So when you're typing in a column name that you expect, you get an expression on the other side for how that column name should be, how that column should be defined, hmm. right? When you have a data set that you're trying to write to it, an existing table that you're trying to onboard new data sets on, you can actually just write a lot of those transformations automatically for that user too. Mm -hmm. So, so it's the combination of both of those um, interfaces. Okay, so you call it promptless. Yes, but it's it's getting a, it's inferring a prompt from whatever, right? The but, but it's yeah. But it's and and and, uh, and behind the scenes, are you doing you know like multi-shot? 
prompting uh, <laughs> like, but that the user doesn't see or like well, secret prompts that nobody sees? Or? Yeah, we would probably need a longer conversation <laughs> to deep <laughs> into all of that. Yeah, th so I think the part of the secret sauce behind it is definitely the knowledge graph that feeds in the details yeah. of that prompt, right? So we understand the schemas of the users, the transformation, and again, the tool is also a compiler. Right? So we actually parse through all the code that mm -hmm. the company has written historically, and we understand, hey, this is the common way that you're joining those two data sets. This is the common way that you're you know, writing your expressions on the other side. So are you training or fine-tuning an existing LLM? Um, LLM? Yeah, so at the moment, it's mostly OpenAI focused. Open We're AI using that as an LLM. It's the best yeah. LLM that is out there. And you know, there's a lot of companies trying to build their LLMs, and then next day OpenAI just does better. Yeah. Um, but we do have a story around building our own private model as well for very specific use cases. Got it. We see enterprises being um, uh, you know, concerned about privacy and governance in this space a lot. Um, they don't want to, their data to be going to OpenAI, and that's natural, right? Or their even metadata. So if they could be running a smaller private model that can be even more stable than OpenAI, right? You don't have to rely on an external endpoint. Um, that, that, that that's a very interesting story to them. So we have something coming out later in the year uh, right. for that. So the, c the concern about OpenAI, just to double click on that, is yeah. uh, it's the quality of the results or is it the concerns over you know, leakage uh, you know, to uh, proprietary data? Mm -hmm. Is it concerns over their, their lack of a governance structure, right. or all of the above? Right. Um, so prophecy, pri we primarily target larger enterprises, right? That's yeah. where the most data so is. That's where the biggest problems are. Fortune 500, right? Like customers like J and J, for instance. Those guys do not want their metadata, their data transformations, or by no means their actual data, right? Ending up in uh, OpenAI Open hands. Yeah. And it's not specifically about OpenAI. It's yeah, just about the breaching the any LLM. Yeah, any it's any not, element. Uh, it's exactly. not OpenAI. Right? But to your point, OpenAI, I would agree. I mean, from our own experience, OpenAI is the best. We, you've used others, but we get right. better results. From right. it. Even personally, mm. uh, you know, I use a lot of them, but, but OpenAI is pretty good. Do you, so how do you then uh, are you building your own, you're saying? Or building yeah, your own so private? essentially what we are seeing is OpenAI is, you're right, is the best, but it's also for everything, right? Yeah. Like, it's not use case specific. Hmm. With models, what happens is people train them on very specific things, and even with little data, you can make them outperform the generic models on those very specific tasks. Yeah. So even though OpenAI is obviously putting, throwing billions, those billions mm -hmm. are on all the use cases under the earth or under the sun, right? So what we are trying to do is, hey, yes, we'll introduce a private model, but that private model is going to be trained for very specific use case, like that next uh, transformation prediction, right? Expression prediction, so very small, narrow use cases mm -hmm. that you can optimize the model to be even better than OpenAI, or at least as good as yeah. OpenAI. And that'll be your own LLM? That'll be, a, that'll be like a fine-tuned version of an existing LLM, yeah. right? So we can just take like the open source, Llama, uh, two, two for instance, right? Seven billion parameter, Correct. and then optimize it, fine-tune it on a specific task. So, so I'm going to go back to G and J example. Right. So you were starting to tell us like, so they don't want their data, or even metadata, to leave their premises, mm -hmm. and you're using Data Transformation Copilot that uses OpenAI's LLM. So how do you reconcile that? Yeah, so essentially at the moment it's very metadata focused, I see. right? And, okay. and I, I want to just re-mention re that the product itself, the copilot, it's not just about that AI piece, right? AI piece is important, but what a lot of people see these days is that AI gives you just code on the other side. Hmm. Right, and code is not suitable for vast majority of the customers. Mm. Right, okay. so even if you know JNJ's business team would right. start consuming that code, they would just have no value out of it. Right, you can ask OpenAI; it will generate you code. It's garbage. They will not be able to productionize it. They will not be able to scale it. They will not be able to even test it cool. correctly. And that's where the other components of the product come in, like the visual interface, where step by step you can actually understand what the pipeline mm -hmm. does, and without having to understand how Python, PySpark, DSLs work, just define uh, the data transformations by themselves. So what are they doing with your product? When I look at what's being used in production, again, our survey partner ETR, Sure. It, it's code generation, it's external customer support, it's mm -hmm. text and data summarization, it's mm -hmm. writing marketing copy. Most recently, we're getting you know, collaboration, like summarizing meetings, okay. We're getting uh, more enterprise search is new, a little bit of image generation, and internal IT support and help desk. 
which maybe is from service now. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. What are they doing with prophecy? Is it are these use cases or is it more specific? Yeah, so those are, I guess, like the general AI yeah. use cases. Very chatty. Oh yeah, these are the ones they say, which, which business use cases uh, have you put in production? Mm -hmm. And this, this is the, those are the ones, the ones I mentioned, are the most so, prominent. So and what it, benefit, business benefit is j, &J getting from using? Sure, 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 yeah, absolutely. So we, we are, uh, the tool again is primarily focused on data transformation, right? So it's not about any data summarizations or anything like that. Right. It's coming back to the roots of essentially ETL and production data pipelines. Hmm. Uh, it comes down to, hey, if you want to build an AI model in production, or like J&J is doing reporting and analytics, you need really good high quality data for it. Yeah. So it's both the engineering teams and the analytical teams uh, building in essentially data pipelines, right? Terni taking data from the sources, um, maybe it's clinical trial information in the J&J's case, and turning them into information that then can be structured hmm. and used for actual research. Getting your, basically your data act together is what you, yeah. you're, Making you're adding, adding value to that process. Yeah. So, so it's that wrangling, that joining yeah. the data together, right, mm -hmm. so that you can extract business insights from it. So you are <coughs> Dave, you're a big baseball fan. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> one of their <laughs> major clients is Texas Rangers. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And they won the World Series. They did. So yeah. they did yeah. a it's session. Exciting. Yeah, they did a session at did an, an AI summit also. Yeah. So can you tell us about Texas Rangers? How exactly are they using, and what benefit are they getting out of? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're using prophecy on top of uh, data bricks. Uh, they are essentially when the game is happening or where the practice of the game is happening. They are looking at all the data that shows up during it. They have sensors, cameras, iPads recording all of that. And they're looking at you know, how the pitchers and, and, and other properties of the game happened, right? Like when someone throws the ball, what's the angle of it? All of that is stored into their you know, database, database, sitting on Databricks. It's all Data Lake. But then this is raw data, right? So you need to now figure out, OK, well, you have all of those angles, and you have scores maybe for those angles, right? When, when did you manage to hit the mm -hmm. ball? Like, which are the ones that are actually going to work? Right, so this is where they use now prophecy to build that transformation on top of that data to find all of that information, right? Like which are the angles, which are the properties that are optimal for our players so they know how to improve their game and later on w win, the, uh, win the tournament. This is a good use case. Yeah, <laughs> I like I, and this. actually, and they won the World Series, yeah. so it's that's actually true. worked. You know, use prophecy and you'll win the World Series. There yeah, you go. So the, it's the age old <laughs> debate about the, you know, the the nerds running baseball, yes. and, uh, but it's like, such a data-driven yeah. game. Correct. But I mean, I could see. Like Oakland A's, you know. Right, imagine you're talking about the the angles. Yeah, the Oakland A's, the yeah. money ball. Money when you're talking ball. about mm -hmm. the angles, maybe it's like, okay, don't don't hit the ball if it's outside you know, this zone. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just because otherwise right. your probability of right. success is, yeah. or maybe it's for defensively position so, against these So ba basically, these basically whoever has the best data and the best analysis has an edge to win the tournament, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah. not like you have the best players. Uh, well, this is what's interesting yeah. <laughs> about, this is the big, the age old debate, because the case with the money ball hmm. was it worked very well over a, a hundred and whatever, 60 game season. But when it came down to seven games, the better players seem to ah. always win, you know, like in soccer this past weekend. Yes, you know? right. It's like it yes. just happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. AI is uh. definitely not trying to replace everyone for this, right? This is all about that extra layer of information. But yeah, pe people are definitely, it's all about the players for sure as well. But it has a much, much bigger role in, yes. in, in this specific, uh, specific right. example. Yep. Um, so, when did you start the company? Uh, yeah, so the company is around six, seven years um, old now. We're, we're going to be getting into the seven-year-old uh, uh, mark. Uh, we have invested very heavily at the beginning at building the actual technology under the hood. It's not easy stuff. And then again, we're, we're working with enterprises, right? So one of our first uh, customers was actually uh, the biggest um, a c a credit card provider uh, in the world, hmm. right? So. When you work with customers like that, they're pretty demanding in terms of the features, how the, you could deploy the product, et cetera. So we've spent a good amount of time just to see exactly what use cases they're building, what problems they're trying to solve, what challenges they're facing while building their you know, data pipelines, and then optimize the product specifically on that. Mm -hmm. Over the last few years, we have released our Copilot for Databricks specifically. So we had a big um, release also, uh, last Databricks AI Summit, right? And we started giving it out to um, all the other enterprise um, customers. So you've raised, is this right, 73, 74 million? Yes, is that correct? recently raised Series B. And you B. feel like you have product market fit at this point? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think th this, this challenge is repeatedly seen across every single customer. I think very often what happens in the large enterprises is that they very heavily invested on the legacy side, right? They had those ab initios, informatica, data stages. Now they're trying to migrate a lot of that to the cloud, and they're seeing that the workforce is just not able to meet those new requirements, right? You need to know how the new world works. You need to be productive in it. You want to enable more people on it. And the prophecy tool enables you to take all that code directly. One of our products is actually migration, a transpiler, we call it. So it takes all that legacy code, it spits you out new native Spark code that you mm. can just now, or SQL code, that you can execute directly on top of your cloud um, data stack. And so that's the use case that you know every single enterprise these days is trying to move uh, from legacy or make people productive on the cloud. So they see prophecy as a huge so uh, modernization of ETL. Exactly. So you can take your old ab initio code, yes. modernize it into Spark, That's run right. it directly against um, uh, Delta tables mm -hmm. on on uh, Databricks. That's right. Or even Alteryx, so, for instance, right? Yes. That's that's something that shows up very often. Um, yes. A lot of business analytics. How it how did it used to yeah. be done? Yeah. It, spreadsheets. Excel files, CSVs Correct. on SharePoint and SFTP. Right. That just doesn't work anymore, right. right? If you're trying to build your AI model, you can't build it on CSV files, yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah. now what you have to do is modernize that whole environment. Correct. And this is where we come in. Uh, we take that Alteryx mappings, we'll migrate yeah. them directly right. into your Databricks or Snowflake. You can start running it on your native cloud. Right. And then you can keep on building more data transformations, whether as a business analyst, as a data scientist, machine learning engineer, or data engineer, just directly on top of mm. uh, the Prophecy platform. You called the product a transpiler? Transpiler, yes. So that's like so transformation technical. Transformation compiler? It's a, yeah, it's a technical. So we come from a little bit of a compiler background. The yeah. technical the transpiler is essentially a source to source uh, code converter. Wasn't, so that's wasn't your co founder working on NVIDIA? Or yes, yes. So that's Raj. Yeah. Raj, yeah, yeah. Raj, Raj came from a very fun background. Uh, he was in NVIDIA. I'm sure everyone knows NVIDIA now because it's so huge. What's NVIDIA? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he was working on CUDA, which is the CUDA. code optimizer that takes your C code and runs it on the GPUs. Uh, so he was one of the first engineers working on that. So that's where we get a lot of that compiler background oh, from. Right, right. But he was also in companies like Hortonworks, uh, PM for Hive, right? So very data oriented. Mm -hmm. Uh, Microsoft as well, working on Visual Studio Code. So, so there is a lot of that background that comes in and plays around, plays together in our um, company. So your big competitor would be in Informatica, for example, or not yeah. necessarily? I think we wouldn't really call them competitor per se. I mean, they're in the landscape, you know, they do ETL as well, but no one is comparing in Prophecy to Informatica, really, right? You're Informatica is the- business to those guys. Exactly. They are here. losing the business to us. <laughs> ah, so they are they are, they are, they <laughs> because they are sitting on the legacy side. Right, so if, if you're running Informatica they, yeah. on your on-prem systems and you're migrating them to cloud, you're usually yeah. not going to migrate to Informatica. Informatica, by the way, just uh, for the record, uh, is trying to move to the cloud. IDMC is all cloud. Sure. They don't want to be on-prem anymore. Sure. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see how they do on Yeah, that. no, yeah. no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. DBT, is DBT one of your... Yeah, so DBT is actually something that's used under the hood in the platform. So DBT is a build system for SQL, right? right? So it's like you have you know, your Maven, for instance, for Java to build your code. Yeah. That's the analogy for the engineers maybe out there. Yeah. Um, but then you also have DBT that builds your SQL code. So for our SQL product, we use DBT core as the underlying build system for right. it. Yeah, so, so that, that, that very often happens. There is a lot of code that has been written on DBT. Hmm. People then struggle with maintenance of that mm -hmm. code. So they can just bring in our product directly on top of that DBT code base really? and just allow you to keep on working on it, yeah. but in an easier to use visual way or code with mm -hmm. those um, AI capabilities as well. So Spark and SQL. Those Spark and SQL, that's right. And Scala yes. also, right? Isn't Scala? So Spark is both for Python, I see. Uh, okay. where you have PySpark, right? Yeah, and then Pyspark. Scala is actually where we started from. So our, our very first customer was working on I Scala for, but it's all Spark. Right. It's all Spark. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations, Majik. Appreciate, appreciate you coming on the Cube. Yeah, great absolutely. It's a great conversation. Thank uh, you so much, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, for Sanjeev Mohan, Mohan, this is Dave Vellante. You're watching the Cube's coverage, CDO IQ from Cambridge, Massachusetts. We'll be right back. <laughs>